I am a real estate broker. That's what I do for a living. And accordingly, this week's Church of Splendor homily might seem to you like inside baseball, but I assure you it's not. I do have a general point, and I'll get to it. But first, I'm going to tell you how to market a home so that it will sell for the highest attainable price it can achieve in the least, the fewest number of days on market. I just uh, closed a house on Friday that <clears throat> beat the highest sales for that floor plan in the market, beat them by $2,000, which is not an insignificant sum at that price level, and um, sold in 12 days. We had a little fight at the end and ended up having to give up $400 that I would have liked to have clung to for my seller, but we negotiated the repair requests down to $65 total. <sighs> I'm a very good realtor. We are very good listers in my brokerage, bloodhoundrealty.com. And the secret to marketing your home so that it will sell for top dollar in the least amount of time, in the fewest number of days on market, is to plan your marketing strategy in such a way that every other home that you're competing with points back to you. So my niece, Madeleine Branham, has her license with our brokerage. She is one of our agents. She just took her first listing three cheers for her. This is a very big deal in the career of a realtor, your first listing. Listers last is what realtors say. The buyer's agents come and go. They are evanescent. 85% of all new licensees fail to renew, which means they fail in the real estate business within the first two years. They are in the real estate business for less than two years before they fail. This is a remarkable, an insanely stupid failure rate. But the antidote to that is to list real estate, not simply work with buyers. You'll always have buyers to work with, but you have to work with sellers in order to last in this business. So Maddie just listed her home and we worked um, over the course of a couple of weeks pricing this home, working on the strategy to price this home, and she hit the market just exactly right. The house that she has listed um, is priced to the market. She's a little bit above the most recent comparable high sale for um, a house like the one she has for sale, but her two competitors, the two competitors that matter, one is overpriced and not as well appointed, so anyone who looks at that is going to say, oh wow, Maddie's house is better, and her other competitor is substantially lower in price, but also substantially lower in amenities and quality, and so that house is going to point back to her listing also. Um, her marketing language is excellent, her photographs are great. Um, everything that you can do to swing the balance in your favor, she's done it remarkably, remarkably well, but there is no substitute for pricing the home correctly to the market, pricing it to the market, but also pricing it in such a way that every competitive home is going to make your home look better by comparison. This can only be done by a professional. People who piss and moan about real estate commissions do not understand what goes into successfully marketing a home, but this is the way it's done, is that if you can approach your marketing strategy in such a way that every competitor becomes your sub-agent, becomes your salesperson, that every other home that you're competing against ends up making your home look more favorable by comparison. If everybody goes out and looks at four or five homes and your listing is at the top of everybody's list, then that home is going to sell quickly for multiple offers above the market price. And the listing agent is going to look like a hero and he's going to get lots and lots of repeat business from that particular seller, but also from everyone that that seller <clears throat> refers the agent to. This is how you survive in real estate. And I'm good at this, and I know a lot about it. We um, ran Bloodhound Blog for 10 years, the last three of which it's been basically moribund. Um, but Bloodhound Blog provided a whole lot of marketing information for real estate professionals nationwide, worldwide. And... Um, I end up knowing a whole lot about how to do all of this business and particularly how to do it so well and so honorably that your clients keep coming back, which is how you measure, measure your integrity as a realtor. You can measure your success by your bank balance, but you can only measure your integrity as a realtor by repeats and referrals because that is the real test of the marketplace for listing agents and buyers agents is do people keep coming back? Do they keep sending their friends and family? Do they keep sending people to you 
every time somebody has a deal, do they say, oh, you've got to go to Greg Swan. Greg and Kathy do a remarkable job. You've got to take your business to Maddie Branham because she kicks, uh, she kicks out all the stops to make sure that her deals get done. All of these things are true at bloodhoundrealty.com. This is not a uh, commercial for my brokerage, but we do business in an exemplary fashion. Everything that we do is intended to do it as well as it can possibly be done. And when we look at something that we've done, as, as well as we thought we could do it and we're not happy with it, then we figure out how to do it even better. And this all kind of ties back in with the idea of admirability that I talked about last week and with the idea of the affectionate display that I've been talking about for the past couple of years. I had um, this deal that closed on Friday had a real, what I considered to be a real ethical problem at the end. I told you I was fighting for money at the end. And the fight, I think, centered on an issue of character. We had negotiated in good faith, and um, at the very last minute, the other side um, tried to renege on part of that. Renege is renegotiate. That's where it comes from. That's where the word comes from. Attempting to um, renegotiate, it's the other term we have for it is Welsh or crawfish. or uh, There are a lot of ugly terms that we have for people who try to change the terms of a deal at the very last minute. But um, I think this all turned on character, and I thought um, that in itself was sad, but it had nothing to do with the business that we were doing. And so the end... My job is to do the business. My job is to serve my client's interest, and that's what we did. I had another one um, that turned ugly just lately, and that was even worse because it was more than just ethics. It was actual open larceny, and I think a conspiracy to com commit larceny among um, very big players um, that I think risks the ownership of their business over a very small sum of money. I think a really stupid kind of larceny. But it came back to me because I said, physician, heal thyself. Ego evangelist, motivate thyself. What is it that I'm doing to promote my ideas about admirability, character, the affectionate display, the right way to do business, the right way to do business, even if it's not quite as enriching as the slightly wrong way or the slightly more wrong way or the openly criminal way? Why is it better for you in the long run to behave honorably, to behave equitably, to behave with integrity, and to build your real estate practice in that way? Why is it better in the long run? Obviously, it's better because of how you'll feel about yourself. The admirability that we talk to starts from the inside out. If you can't admire your own choices, they will haunt you forever. They will haunt you forever. So that alone, even if nobody ever catches you, or even if it's really a matter of no consequence, it really doesn't matter, you will know what you did, and you will never be able to forget what you did. But as we said, repeats and referrals come to the agents who put the client's interests first, who recognize where it is that the client stands to gain or lose and defends those positions even at the expense of his own interests, even at the expense, for instance, of his own sales commission. You defend the client's interests, you make the client, make sure the client gets the full value for the value traded. And if you do that, then you get repeats and referrals unending. You get you end up doing five and six and seven, eight, ten transactions with the same people over and over and over again. So better for your mental health, for your self-adoration, better for your career in the long run, better for your income, better for your family, better for everybody. Why not do better? And that's a question that I can ask myself. Why I lean on me, I lean on Kathleen, I lean on Maddie to do better. I've been working very hard with Maddie to help her understand how to do these jobs while she's doing them because abstract book learning don't teach nobody nothing you have to actually do it learn by doing while you're doing it and then you can understand the underlying reasons behind the way we do things i'm training her why am i not devoting my efforts to helping agents of integrity better express that integrity in their professional practice real estate agents lenders escrow officers everyone associated with real estate transactions. I know an awful lot about how you do business and how you can do business in a way that is fundamentally better, more honorable, and more profitable simultaneously. Why am I not working toward that? And so 
I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to start small because I'm not interested in starting big and I don't have any money to invest in any case. Um, so I'll talk to Weimar and see if I can get a room and uh, Weimar, the West, whatever it is, Valley, Western Maricopa Association of Realtors or something like that. I don't know what it means, but my local realtor association, I will set up a, see if I can set up a room with them and put together something once a week, a brief little session, maybe an hour long total, um, say every Monday morning at 8 a.m. would be ideal for me. But think of it as raising the real estate bar camp. The real estate bar camp is part of the bar camp movement. We know the people who started that. They were, uh, Brad Coy and Andy Kaufman started the bar camp movement and they did a remarkably beautiful job. And the bar camps still happen all over the country, real estate bar camps. Um, at the same time that the bar camps were being started, there was an idea called raising the, raising the bar in real estate. And what raising the bar consisted of was um, trying to forbid anyone without a college degree from working in real estate. Well, a college degree is, is a, a un, unbelievably useless. All it really demonstrates is that you can't do the math on um, your future earning power versus the cost of obtaining a college degree. Um, but of course, the best people in real estate don't have college educations because they're entrepreneurs. It's an entrepreneurial job. Um, increasing the licensing requirements for agencies strikes me as being insanely stupid because we already have licensing requirements and everybody we have is shoddy, shady, and dumb. It is Phil Dunphy is the ideal realtor. He's not, he's not really shady. He's just shoddy and dumb. That's the best you can hope for. No, it's not. And that's not the best that there should be. And so, um, I want to combine the two ideas. I don't want to increase the, the requirements for people working in real estate, but I do want to help them understand how better to effect the fiduciary and agency duties of a real estate professional in such a way that you do better quality, more honorable, more profitable work from now on going forward. You learn better practices. You learn the best practices, practices for achieving the best possible results in your career. And uh, I want to identify people who are interested in pursuing goals like that. I want to help them learn more, but I also want to meet them so that I can choose to do business with them rather than taking my chances on the random idiots who show up through the MLS. So just this as a matter of practical details for people who are working in real estate in the Northwest or the West Valley in Phoenix. Um, I can see, you know, on a, on a regular basis, you know, taking up contract and legal issues, sales and marketing stuff, technology, technology tools, both, you know, for sales and marketing, lead generation, funnel management, but also back office stuff, transaction management stuff. And then at least once a month, every month, um, devoting uh, a session to ethics, to the ethics of our profession and making sure that we're putting our clients' interests first and making sure that um, no one has any reason to call anyone associated with this idea, this raising the real estate bar camp, that no one associated with that um, could be accused of being shoddy, shady, or dumb. Um, we wanna, if we want to raise the bar, then let's promote the best people in our business, teach them better practices so that they get bigger and in, and when they get bigger they will gradually flush the cockroaches out of this business and that's the only way that it'll happen and so if it's to my interest in any way at all to raise the bar for real estate professionals this is the way to do it. Um, if you are local to Phoenix and you want to be involved with this, make contact. Search for Greg Swan, two N's, Bloodhound Realty. I'm easy to find. Go to bloodhoundrealty.com. I'm easy to find. Go to selfadoration.com. I'm easy to find. I'm at G Swan, G G S W A N N on Twitter. Friend me and DM me. Do whatever you want. If you want to get involved with this, make contact and I will um, get together with you and I will figure out how to get it done. But if you're not in real estate, you're not local. You have no practical reason to contact me about this. Well, God damn it, do it yourself. Do it in your own profession. Do it where you are. This idea of admirability is something that can be transmitted if you organize your content in such a way. As, as I said, it can be something as simple as a smile and a wave or just a little squint of your eyes and say, well done, as you're walking by, that you're acknowledging 
someone's great work. But if you want to improve the professional and ethical standards in your business, whatever that business is, then set up something like this. Just get a room and get people together and do presentations on how to do your work better and more ethically and more responsibly and more professionally and ideally more profitably. But if the people who care about standards care enough to help other people care about standards raise their standards, then the standards will become so high that the bottom feeders will get flushed out of the business. They'll move on to some other, what they think of as a con game, and we will preserve our business for the people who want to do it admirably. I'm talking locally. I'm leaning on you to act globally, wherever you are. Do your local best to make a global improvement in the admirability of the human race. And this is one way of achieving that. So this is Greg Swan. That's me. This is the Church of Splendor. You're here. I'll be back here next week to bend your ear again. And I thank you for giving me your time and attention today.